Hi friends, I'm Ron Strong, and it's week four of our Tunisian Delight Sampler Crochet Along. I'm really excited because this week we're finishing things up. We're gonna learn how to seam our blocks together, how to kind of put our afghan together. We're also going to touch on the cross stitching, um, the border, the crab stitch, so we got a lot to cover. Uh, first up, we're gonna talk about how to block our blocks, how to measure them properly, and how to make adjustments if needed. So let's get started. All right, so one of the biggest questions I get whenever I do a sampler afghan is, uh, Ron, what do I do? My blocks aren't coming out all the same size. And that's totally normal. We've been doing a variety of stitches. And in the case of our Tunisian entrelock, uh, we used a standard crochet hook instead of a regular, or a Tunisian crochet hook. So it kind of made things a little bit iffy. And sometimes your blocks don't always come out the same size. I have four different blocks here. I have a Tunisian simple stitch block, a reverse stitch, a double stitch, and a knit stitch. Now the first things you'll notice is that out of all of these blocks, they all curl a little bit differently. Our Tunisian double stitch doesn't curl as much, but it definitely still has a little bit of a curl to it. Our Tunisian reverse stitch lays pretty flat. Our knit stitch, well that rolls like a taco. And our simple stitch has a little bit of roll, but not too much. So. The single crochet edging definitely helps kind of cure the roll, um, but here's the thing. Tunisian crochet and curling, it's always gonna happen. No matter how many blog posts you read, no matter how many videos you watch that advertise ways to cure the curl, it's all things you're going to do after you've finished with your crochet or things you'll do before you start crocheting. There's no active way to cure the Tunisian curl while you're crocheting, not totally. It can't happen, especially with knit stitch and simple stitch. So one of the ways that we keep these blocks from curling, number one, is seaming them together. When we seam all these blocks together, they don't have the, the ability to curl because your blocks are kind of being pulled from all sides. The single crochet around helps as well. The other thing we can do is block. Now blocking is a process of wetting our blocks and saturating them and then laying them out flat. And you can do it with garments, you do it with shawls, you do it with a lot of different accessories. Now what I love to do is I love to do an assembly line block where I lay all of these out. Now I have these big floor pads. These are my, I bought these from um, Home Depot and you can buy them in a very large pack. If I can find them on the Home Depot website, I'll link them in the description down below. Um, while you're there, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that like button. Um, and if you need any more information about how to do um, any of the blocks, you can find all the links down there too. So make sure you check those out. All right, now that that's out of the way, back to blocking. All right, so let's talk about how we're going to block. Now my, uh, my sampler blocks are all made out of acrylic, which most of yours will be made out out of as well, because that's what I recommended. So we're gonna do a process called killing acrylic. Now killing acrylic is the process of adding steam and intense the, the intense heat of the steam flash kind of melts the plastic in the acrylic and then it immediately seizes back up. Here's the one warning. Once we do this, the blocks will never go back to where they were. So make sure they are exactly where you want them to be. Um, you can't take this back. We, it's one and done, one and done. All right, so I'm going to actually do it with my Tunisian knit stitch block because this guy here is, he's the curliest of them all. Now, a couple things to keep in mind. Um, you should have, did your single crochets all the way around, you should have 25 each side and three in each corner for a total of 112 single crochets. It is extremely important that you have 112. You should not have any more or any less because it's gonna make seaming this afghan really, really tough. You're going to need a tape measure. I just have a regular old plastic one here. And the very first thing we wanna do is make sure that our blocks measure nine and a half inches, about. Now. Here's the deal. A couple of you messaged me and said, Ron, my blocks aren't turning out. I don't know what to do. I've done it with multiple hook sizes. I went down, I went up, and they're just not getting to that nine and a half inches after I put the single crochet border on. I don't know what to do. Well, here's the short answer. You're gonna fudge it. <laughs> so if you're at like nine inches, if you're about a half inch, these blocks are gonna stretch. I'll show you. If you're more than a half inch, somewhere in the three quarter inch to one inch territory, 
I do recommend trying your best to um, get it where it needs to be. Now, if your block is bigger than it needs to be, you're, I really, really advise that you remake it to make it smaller. However, if your blocks are just turning out small and you can't get them to the nine and a half inches, I have a solve for you, all right? We did one round of single crochet. Nothing's stopping you from doing an extra round of single crochet or a round a half double. Heck, even around a double. Just make sure that you're putting those three stitches in each corner in the center stitch. So in this case, we have three single crochets in each corner in that first round of single crochet, right? So if I were to work double crochet around, I would double crochet all the way to the center single crochet of that three single crochet group, and I would work three double crochets in there, okay? Don't, I wouldn't work too many rows after that because then it's gonna look a little weird. You're gonna have this tiny little block and then you know this big thing on the outside. But if you just need to fudge it a little bit, that's a great way to do it, honestly. Um, and I've seen some people already do that, especially with the entrelock block, because it can turn out a little bit smaller than what it needs to be. Um, and that's totally up to you. you. This is your Afghan. This is your um, sampler. This is what you want it to be. So if you want to keep trying, just don't get too frustrated with yourself. Remember, there's always a way to fix it, right? Okay. So now let's take a look at um, our block. So this is my Tunisian knit stitch block here, and I'm laying my tape measure on, and I can see that I am at nine and a half inches exactly on the width. Let's check my length. I'm not feeling too positive about this. So I'm measuring from the very top to the very bottom, and I can see that my, I need to get it straight there, I'm about a half inch short, maybe three quarters of an inch short on the length, on the width, like I said, I'm right at nine and a half. So what do I do? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my pins. Now, some people use fancy things. Um, I grew up with a Nana that wasn't too fancy. So I use regular old yellow head sewing pins. Now I know I don't need to add any width. So what I'm gonna do is just pin my block to set it. Then, I'm going to pin along one end. So as I'm doing this, let me remind you, if your block turns out exactly nine and a half inches, you do not need to do this. All you need to do is add a little bit of steam to your block to help set the stitches. You can wash them and just lay them flat to block. It's totally up to you. But if you're like me and your blocks aren't turning out exactly where they need to be, then this is a great option. So I'm going to add two pins on each side about an inch down just to hold it into place. Then what I'm going to do is grab my tape measure and put the zero on one end and I'm going to stick a pin in the end of my tape measure. Then I'm going to just lay my black flat and I can see that right now it's getting about nine inches. So I'm just gonna start kind of coaxing that fabric towards me by running my hand over it gently. Then, once I get it right where I want it to be at nine and a half inches, I'm going to simply put a couple pins in. Then I can remove the pin from my tape measure and I can go ahead and start stretching the block to those center pins. So by doing this, what I'm doing is just getting my block right where it needs to be. I'll put some in the corners. And you're gonna see some gaps that form when you stretch the blocks. That's totally fine. Don't worry about it right now. And like I said, I don't have to worry about the length or the width too much, it's mostly the length. And I can already tell this is a great square. Now I'm not gonna worry about the edges being too wavy because we're seaming these blocks together. So those edges are gonna straighten up once we put a seam in there. We just wanna get it right where we, need, where we need it to be. The other thing is you've noticed I haven't woven in any of my ends. I wait to do that until the entire afghan is seamed. All right, so now that I have all of my pins in place, what I'll do is try not to break my steamer. Then, I'm going to turn it on and fill it with just a touch of water. I'm 
going to put the lid on and I'm going to give it a minute to warm up. Why do we use a steamer and not an iron? In iron, you run the risk of laying it too close to your acrylic and creating a permanent melting situation that you can't undo. And I hate that. I'm gonna talk quickly because this is about to get real loud. One of the other reasons I like these mats from um, Home Depot is that I can move them. The steamer that I have, I can't hold it down because it'll end up leaking hot water. All right, so I've got this all pinned out. I got my, <laughs> my steamer going, as you can probably tell. I'm gonna try not to let it hit my face with all my makeup on. But all I'm gonna do, this is one of the reasons that I love these mats from Home Depot. I can just hold them up on their own and this block is staying put. Now this is a little tough for me to see, so hopefully you can see it. But what I'm gonna do is just run my steamer over top of my piece. And you'll notice that your stitches start to like puff out and it starts to look beautiful. And that's it. That's all blocking is. Then I'm gonna give it a little tug, but the stitches are already set. This is not going to go back to that original measurement. So I'm gonna take all of my pins out and you'll watch, this does not move an inch. It stays exactly where I want it to. Now here's the deal with Tunisian knit stitch. You can already tell it wants to curl. It's always going to want to curl. Tunisian knit stitch is just atrocious unless you add a bunch of borders. Luckily, we're doing that with a sampler. It's always going to curl, so keep that in mind. But that's it. That's how you block. This block is now ready to be seamed just like the other ones. So I want you to do that with all of your blocks. Give them all a little bit of steam, get them all ready to go, and get them all the same size. Now make sure very important, like I said, make sure that you have your correct stitch count on all of the blocks. Next, we're going to talk about um, cross stitch, and then we're going to talk about seaming our blocks, all right? All right, so next we're going to talk about how to cross stitch on our simple stitch block. Now, this is totally optional. If you don't feel like doing this, just skip this part of the video. Go to the next section where we start talking about assembly, all right? So when it comes to cross stitching, um, it's totally up to you, the design that you want. Now, with the pattern this week, I've included a chart for the heart. I've also included a blank chart that you can kind of fill in and draw your own design. And um, there's a ton of designs out there that are free that you could use for your own personal enjoyment. Um, I just chose a heart. Today, I'm just gonna show you how to do the basic cross stitch stitch, um, which I think is rather important. So I have a nice little block of Tunisian simple stitch here. And um, what I need to do is find the other end of my yarn and pull it up. I'm gonna cut it. And I'm gonna get rid of our um, afghan, put this to the side. So the thing with cross stitch is um, it's really easy to do. Actually, I used to do cross stitch when I was a kid. It was one of the very first crafts other than crochet that I picked up doing, and I really loved doing it. It's very meditative. Um, it's really, really easy to do once you get going. Um, the important thing is to always work in rows um, and to always make sure your crosses are going in the same direction. So first up, what you would do is thread a uh, tap tapestry needle, just using a regular tapestry needle, and you're going to want to use the same weight of yarn that you used for your block. So worsted weight block, worsted weight yarn. You're going to come up and through your work on the left side of one of the vertical bars. And the great thing about Tunisian Simple Stitch is that it's essentially a block. So you want to come up on the left side of one of the vertical bars and through. Then we're going to cross a vertical bar and diagonally we're going to go into the hole that's at the base of the vertical bar on the next row up, kind of one block over. And we're going to go down into that stitch. Now don't pull too tight here, just pull enough so that way your stitch sits on top. 
then we're going to go right through the hole that's next to right below where we put our yarn through and to the right of where we originally brought our yarn through the work. Then again, we're going to go diagonally into the next hole. And the great thing about Tunisian crochet is those holes are there for you. And what you'll do is just very simply working from, I always work from right to left. I find that's easier for me because I'm right-handed. You're just going to keep going up and through your work. All right, so then once you have a few stitches, we have five here, what you're going to do is basically the opposite of what we did. You're going to come through as if you're going to do another stitch, but instead of going to the upper right-hand corner, we're gonna backtrack and go through the hole that we went down with our previous stitch. So right here at the top, we're gonna go down and through there. And we're gonna go up and through we're basically now working from right to left we're just backtracking go up and through so once you get back to your beginning depending on your design you're going to I always move kind of one block over depending on what I'm doing and I just repeat the same process I come up I move one block to the right and I go down on the diagonal. I come up through my work. I move one block to the right on the diagonal and I go down. Now if I wanted to work from right to left back, I come up through my work and on your back, I'm gonna go diagonal but to the left. I come up, diagonal to the left. Come up, and then diagonal to the left. Now, if your crosses aren't looking perfect, mine definitely don't look perfect here. You can just kind of fiddle with them. But they're going to settle on their own. And that's it. That's all there is to cross stitching. So you're going to follow the chart working in rows. Uh, and you can, like I said, follow the heart chart, or you can make your own chart, or you can skip this part entirely. It's totally up to you. You can kind of go freehand and just do little axes all over, which I think would be really beautiful as well. Totally up to you. So next, let's talk about seaming our afghan together. All right, so let's talk about assembling our afghan. Now, you can assemble this any way you want. You can seam these block by block. You can do rows. You can do columns. It's totally up to you. I kind of go higgledy-piggledy and just do whatever I'm feeling like on that particular day. There's no right or wrong way to seam, in my opinion. Um, just make sure that your seams are always um, really, really strong. And the way you do that is always use the same size hook that you used for your border stitches, your single crochet stitches, and use the same yarn. Um, and I always seam with acrylic yarn. Even if I'm making a wool afghan, I'll always seam it with an acrylic yarn because acrylic is just stronger. All right, so let's talk about how I seam. This afghan, I seamed the rows first and then I put the columns together. Alrighty. I'm gonna put a crochet or a slip knot on my crochet hook. And then if I were to, so let's say I wanted to do rows first. So we have four blocks. I would seam these two blocks together and then I would seam these two rows or columns technically columns. We're seaming rows to make columns, and then we'll seam the columns together. You with me? Okay. Sometimes I don't know if I'm with myself. So the very first thing I would do is I would grab two blocks to seam those rows together. I would find my center single crochet, and I would insert my hook into the back loop with my slip stitch, or, or my slip knot on my hook, and then I'm going to find the back loop of the center single crochet of that three single crochet corner and I'm going to insert my hook into that okay next next I would just simply pull through I have two loops on my hook 
then I'm going to slip one loop through the other. Next, I'm going to go through the back loop of the block facing me and the back loop of the block behind me. And I'm going to slip stitch. And I'm going to do the same thing again. And you just keep repeating this across. This is my very favorite way to seam afghan blocks. Just a simple back loop only slip stitch seam. Now why do I do it with the right sides facing? When you seam your blocks with the right sides together and the wrong sides facing you, you often end up with the bubble effect. That's where you have a deep seam and your seam is kind of recessed and it causes your blocks to puff out. And if there is one thing I hate, it is a puffy block. So to avoid that, I always seam with the right side facing. It's just my preferred method. Here's the great thing about crochet. There's about a million and a half ways to do about a million and a half things. And seaming is one of those things. You got a whole lot of different ways to seam blocks and make sure that they don't come apart. You do what you love to do. If you've never done a sampler afghan before, you've never seamed blocks together, all you gotta do is work this way. All right, so I am at that center. So once I've worked from the center single crochet all the way across to the center single crochet, um, in the left hand corner because I start in the right and I work across to the left Here I'm going to chain one Then I'm not going to break my yarn. I'm going to grab the next two blocks I'm going to insert my hook into the back loop of that second single crochet on Each of the block facing me and the block behind my wrong sides are together And I'm going to slip stitch through and tighten that up Then I'm going to do exactly what I did before I'm going to slip stitch in the back loops of each stitch across. So I'm just going to keep doing this until I get to the end. Then I'll end off my yarn and fasten off. Sorry, forgot what I was saying there. <laughs> Crochet is just too relaxing. And then I'm teaching it, and then I get really relaxed and into it, and then I'm like, well, what the heck was I doing in the first place? I'm just going to keep going, working my way across. Then, I'm going to open these up so you can see I have a nice seam. Now, if I were using the same color yarn as the blocks, this seam would be pretty darn invisible. And as you can see, it's pretty darn flat. If I added a little bit of steam to this, this would lay perfectly flat. And even on the back side, see how these start to bubble? That's what I mean by that bubble effect. I don't like that on the right side. I'd rather have that on the wrong side. So you'll finish working your seam all the way across in the same way, and you'll just fasten off. Then you'll do the same thing from top to bottom seaming all the way down, working in the back loops, and just slip stitching all the way. The biggest question I often get is, well, Ron, what do I do when I come to this section here, where this intersection is of the four blocks? You're going to do the same thing we did in this section from when I worked from right to left. You'll just chain one, and then you'll go right into the next stitches. Here's, here's what I would do if I were you. When you get to this section here, you can reinforce this intersection by working into the back loops of the stitches that you've already worked. So if you look really closely, you'll see that I already put a stitch here and here. So these two stitches technically already have a slip stitch worked from the horizontal. And now I'm going vertical. I'm still going to go into those stitches and I'm going to slip stitch and I'm going to secure it again. Same thing on the other side of the intersection after I do that chain one. I'm going to do
do a, uh, I'm gonna slip there even though I already worked two stitches. That's just gonna reinforce those intersections wherever you have four blocks or um, any blocks really intersecting at any one point, it creates a weak spot in your afghan. So it's always a great idea to reinforce it whenever you can by working into those stitches and you know, like double working into them, even though that's not in the pattern. That's a little tip that you only get from watching this video that'll help reinforce those intersections. So after you got your blocks all seamed together, you need to work your border. Your border is simply going to be the same, worked the same way as we worked the rest, all of our blocks. You'll work single crochets all the way around, and then you're going to do a round of half double crochets, um, and then another round of half double crochet, but this time it'll be in your final color, which is this pink color here. Now, I'm not gonna show you how to do that because I know you already know how to do that. It's just standard crochet, um, and it's relatively easy. Uh, the other thing that you're going to want to do um, when you're working your very final row is, um, this is optional, but it's reverse single crochet, otherwise known as crab stitch. Um, and I think it's called crab stitch because it's, it's a crabby stitch. It can be a little difficult to do. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So after you work your few rounds of the border, um, the very last thing you have to do is work some crab stitch. So crab stitch or reverse single crochet stitch, whatever you wanna call it, um, is it can be a little bit tricky. So I'm gonna show you how to do it today. Um, I'm going to be using a contrasting yarn and working into just the side of a block, but that's because I want to show you how to do it. So reverse single crochet is worked in reverse. So we're going to work from left to right instead of working from right to left. Now here's the deal. I've been crocheting for a long time, a little over two decades, and I still get a little crabby when I'm doing crab stitch because it never starts out as cleanly as I finish it. So keep that in mind. So what I'm going to do is normally if I'm working a single crochet, I'd go into the next stitch and pull up a loop and finish my single crochet. But instead, we're going to take our hook and kind of bring it to the front and insert it into the stitch previous and go through. Then I'm going to grab my yarn with my hook. I'm going to pull it through and I'm going to pull through both loops. So I go into the stitch before, working backwards. I pull up a loop and I pull through. You'll notice that I'm rotating my hook quite a bit and then I pull through. So I'm going into the stitch like this. I'm grabbing my yarn. I'm really rotating my hook. I'm pulling that loop through. I have two loops on my hook and I pull through two. I go through the loop. I grab my yarn, pull up a loop, and pull through two. Into the stitch, round, and pull through two. So when you work this, and you go all the way across, you get this beautiful, gorgeous, braided edge. Well friends, that is it. Can you believe that four weeks have gone by? And in that time, we have created a beautiful, crochet skill building Tunisian Afghan. This Tunisian Delight sampler was inspired by all of you. I wanted to create something that could prove to you that you can do amazing things when you put your mind to it. I love crochet and I love crochet the most because it's taught me over the years that no matter what, if I just practice, if I just keep my head down and I keep doing that thing that intimidates me again and again and again, eventually I'm gonna become really good at it. And Tunisian crochet used to scare me a whole lot. And now I've written multiple books on Tunisian crochet. I've designed a whole lot. I've invented techniques. There's a lot that Tunisian crochet has to offer. There's a lot that crochet has to offer. And it really just comes down to kind of putting our head down and getting in the game and knowing that if we just try, we're probably going to be able to do. So I hope you've enjoyed these last four weeks. Um, we'll have another crochet along coming soon. Uh, remember, you can find all the links to everything you need in the description down below. We have a wonderful, active, vibrant Facebook crochet club that you can join. You just got to hit that link. You can follow me on Instagram at Ron Strong. Um, and you can always share 
uh, any questions, comments, or concerns that you have with me in the comments down below. You can send me DMs on Instagram or ask a question in our Facebook group. We got a couple thousand people there that are always willing to answer whatever questions that you have. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. I hope you have a wonderful week, a wonderful day, and lots and lots of happy stitching. Bye, guys.